Hello, uh, welcome. Um, my name is Jason Shepard. I'm a VP of Ecosystem at a company called Zadita, and I also uh, sit on the board as the governing board chair for LF Edge. Today, I'm going to talk about edge computing. It's certainly a hot topic, and, and there's a lot of clickbait going on around there, and hopefully I can dispel some of the myths and talk a little bit about how it relates back to, to mainframe computing. Uh, been doing edge and IoT type stuff for, for quite a while. Um, you know, my motto, I think, to sum it up, as I say at the bottom here, if it's fuzzy, I'm on it. Uh, that's from really ambiguous technology trends to uh, our three cats. Um, uh, any anywhere in between, uh, definitely like to to be on the emerging uh, end of technology and and um, you know help shape new markets. So, <laughs> to be honest, when I, when um, I was asked to do this, I I just I didn't know a lot uh, about mainframes. I mean, I knew generally you know about mainframes, but um, if you guys are old enough, I'm uh, uh, certainly a child of the 70s and 80s. Uh, Whopper was the big computer from the movie War Games. And it's kind of my, the first thing that comes to mind when I think of mainframes and, and whatnot. But um, it was it was good to, to kind of educate and you know, to some degree re-educate myself on, on mainframes. And, and, you know, they're still alive and well, and there's a lot of evolution happening, which is which is really interesting and, and clearly um, what's happening within the open mainframe uh, community is, um, I think, important. And we're also, as we talk today, we'll we'll really go through how there's not really a single answer for um, you know, these different types of uh, solutions as you look across the spectrum. Um, so what's you know what are we seeing? So the pendulum. I mean, a lot of people talk about the, the transition between centralization and decentralization. That's you know never-ending swinging and uh, you know, we went from uh, mainstream, you know, then we started seeing client server architectures, the PC uh, comes to be, uh, this little old thing called the internet comes along and you know, obviously things become massively connected and then the mobile transition and then we saw the rise of the cloud and then IoT became the hot topic, which then of course drives more data on networks, networks get congested, latency becomes a problem and all of a sudden now we're talking edge. And you know, the reality is none of these technology trends, they don't just disappear. They don't go away. Obviously, you guys know uh, very well that mainframe is still uh, alive and well, and, and we're seeing a, a evolution even in that um, context. But, you know, none of these really die. I mean, people, you know, 10 years ago, the PC's dead. There's there's a tool for the job. Uh, obviously, mobile is, has gotten to a point where it's it's very well um, saturated, and, and you're, we're not seeing a lot of change there. And we're you know, we still haven't seen the the beginnings of some of the different um, form factors and things that that are going to be coming. But um, yeah, again, none of these things really really change or or, or go away. Uh, they just morph over time. You start to see bleed between the different uh, uh, trends, and you know, of course, you insert AI and five G and all this different stuff from there, and and um, digital twin. You know, there's just a lot of hot topics right now, and and they all use a lot of the same underlying technologies and themes. Um, <laughs> so why edge computing? One of the one of the ways I've been using this example for a while, but I mean, the reason we need edge computing, of course, is because of cat videos. You know, it's, it's a, uh, uh, you know, you get a lot of uh, people hitting a, a cat video and you need to catch it, cache it local, uh, closer to the those users so that you reduce latency and, and don't clog things uh, upstream. So, you know, cat videos are a, um, you know, key, uh, a key driver. Uh, by the way, if you haven't seen this one, um, this is a one one of the golden ones from the past year, where uh, the the lawyer uh, could not turn off their snap uh, filter and and um, during this this hearing and and uh, it was like I am not a cat I'm trying to <laughs> convey it to everybody. So it's it's great. I highly recommend looking it up online. But um, you know, as of, as we draw uh, more and more sensor data going the other way, so you know. Streaming video is certainly download centric, but as we see more, you know, IoT type devices that are upload centric, pushing data upstream, uh, that completely changes how you have to, you know, architect your network, and, and then bandwidth costs become an issue. So as we go, um, I've joked also for a long time that you know when I was doing IoT specifically, starting about uh, seven or eight years ago, uh, that we're in the AOL stage of getting things online. Um, so if you remember AOL back from the uh, early 90s, get a little CD in the mail and, and you get started. And then after a while, people realize, oh, I don't need this to get connected to the internet. And then, you know, just there's so much innovation happened from there. But you know, people are learning about these core technologies. Um, you know, now we're, we're seeing a lot of people talk edge. 
uh, a lot of confusion about which edge, you know, there, there's, there's various different um, uh, points along the continuum and, and people tend to look at it from the perspective of what they do or what's the use cases that they serve. So, you know, I think we're, we're, we're beginning to get out of the AOL stage, uh, so to speak, for, for edge computing and, and um, you know, as these variety, various different technologies mature. But then I get a lot of people coming to me and saying, um, hey, you know, 5G, you know, the, the networks are so fast that you don't, you know, edge is a short lived thing. You know, we're, we're going to see, you know, computing happening in the cloud because 5G is so fast, uh, low latency and, and all that. But, but the reality is that it's actually a bigger driver of edge computing because while the small cell radios have very, very fast connections, you know, in a very directional fashion, uh, very low latency, that is a, over the very, very last few hundred feet or several hundred feet, uh, but you still have that bottleneck, bottleneck upstream from that um, uh, radio to the back end. You know, it could be multiple different hops, and so it actually drives more of a need for compute closer to those cells, highly, highly distributed within uh, various different environments. Uh, we're also seeing 5G become kind of like the new Wi-Fi for factories and buildings and, and the like, you know, not just you know, around, around cities and certainly not just for, for consumers. Uh, actually, I think that, um, you know, the industrial space and, and the commercial sense, uh, we're going to see uh, some of the biggest um, gains in, in, you know, or, or early traction in 5G. And it's going to be as much about driving new business models as it is about the technology itself. So no, 5G isn't going to you know kill off edge computing in short order. Um, there's also you know it's again it's about the purpose built tools for the right job, and, and we're going to see that bleed. I mean, just just like why why do mainframes are they still alive and well because they're they're purpose built for just massive uh, uh, transaction you know or data processing and and, uh, and running transactions and just all kinds of different uh, use cases. Uh, clearly, cloud resources, traditional servers off the shelf um, have changed things a bit, but at the same time, there, there's always a tool, the right tool for a job. So PLCs, programmable logic controllers from the operations world, uh, these have been around for 40 you know, years plus, um, very, very purpose built for their function. Um, controlling things in what we call hard real time, uh, deterministic uh, message must get there in, in this uh, predictable fashion where bad things happen. Um, and and you know, even here, we're starting to see some bleed between general purpose compute and PLCs uh, at that control layer. But there's also naturally there wants to be a separation of concerns because in the operations environment, like a factory floor, uh, a security issue or some sort of failure uh, creates an immediate loss of production, if not, you know, risk to, to life. So, you know, clearly very important that they're, they're rock solid. Um, but there's also a lot of economies of scale of, of bringing in general purpose commute, compute. Um, I've also been in, uh, you know, I come from the IT side, but I've, I've learned a lot about the operations or OT side um, over the number of years. And I've been in many uncomfortable conversations where there's an IT person who's like, oh, hey, factory, you know, manager or whatever, I, I can manage your PLC from the cloud. It's like magic. And they're like, get out. You know, you're not going to touch my infrastructure. You want to have that, that separation. But over time, we'll start to see soft PLC software base uh, merge into um, more standard off the shelf infrastructure that are right next to applications, maybe normalizing data and feeding that up. But, um, you know, that's as much of a cultural shift uh, between these different groups with different priorities as, as it is the, the technology. And so, you know, PLCs obviously serve a, a certain need. And then, of course, uh, you know, I don't care how fast your, your 5G is or, you know, whatever your connection is, you will never, ever deploy, um, you know, an airbag or, or, you know, some mission critical, very, very deterministic, deterministic need in terms of timing um, from the cloud. You'll augment your know, driving with, with um, augmented reality services, certainly infotainment and mapping and correlating uh, routes and traffic uh, through these networks, but not local action. You won't drive your car uh, locally, uh, just augmented. And the, the same, <laughs> speaking of the, the cat theme, the same thing applies with uh, highly constrained devices, you know, far out in the field, very, very purpose built. Um, we are seeing more and more standardization here. It's inherently challenging because of the resource constraints, but these are edges, you know, just as well uh, just require different tool sets, you know, because of those constraints and, and uh, tend to be embedded code and more custom to the silicon. But you know, we see this continuum 
you know, across and then and the, the bleed happening across that spectrum. So if you haven't seen it, uh, there's a really good white paper within um, the LF Edge uh, organization that we put out uh, um, a little over a year ago. And it talks through at great length, the edge is a continuum. There's a lot, of, a lot of confusion, as I said, and people are like, you know, thin edge and thick edge and near edge and far edge. And the funny thing about near and far is that the consumer sees it completely opposite of what like a telco would see in terms of what's near and what's far. Uh, industrial edge, AI edge, you know, all these different things. The reality is there's one continuum uh, from those constrained devices that connected cat collar all the way up through, you know, kind of small cell uh, uh, 5G radios at the access edge, you know, it could be a regional data center just on the other side of, of the internet edge, you know, uh, on the other side of like the public clouds, uh, or those intelligent devices in between those constrained devices in a traditional on-prem data center. You know, this could be your mobile devices, it could be P uh, PLCs, PCs, uh, they're all along this continuum, you know, gateways and, and servers on the factory floor would fit in what we call the smart device edge within the community. And um, there's there's three kind of key trade-offs that define which edge that, that we established. Um, so as you go from centralized data centers and clearly, you know, the mainframe uh, paradigm is, is that, that, that centralized uh, situation. As you go left towards the physical world, the first one, is uh, are you latency critical or are you latency sensitive? Latency critical, you know, your airbag, um, the, uh, you know, stopping a spinning piece of machinery before someone gets hurt or any of these types of things, uh, this will always be run on-prem or on device, um, you know, making those decisions because your wide area network could go down, it's too risky. If it's latency sensitive, feeding up my cat videos, I mean, I'd, I'd be disappointed if, if it shut down or it had a bad experience, but it, you know, no one's gonna die if, if they don't get to see the Dodo you know, today, but uh, as much as I do love it. Um, so you've got this spectrum. So the first one's latency critical or latency sensitive. That determines whether you're gonna be on, on uh, upstream of the wide area network to feed a lot of different users scale out or downstream you know, on-prem where you have immediate response and, and uh, full autonomy regardless of that network status. The next big uh, transition point is, are you in a physically secure data center or are you not? I mean, clearly mainframes, you know, centralized cloud resources, even on-prem traditional data centers, they're all physically secure. They have a defined network perimeter. But then you get out of that and you know you, you could be on a factory floor in a wind turbine on a, in a truck a retail store stuffed in the closet somewhere or you know, completely accessible uh, of course there's mobile devices and pcs like consumer devices uh smart toasters and light bulbs and all of stuff now you've got a different set of security challenges um, but also the skill sets are different compared to what you would see in a in a centralized controlled uh, environment like a data center um, so in, in or out of a, a, a data center is, is another big inflection point that drives unique needs around how do you manage it at scale? How do you secure it? You need a very robust zero trust security model and you need it to be especially simple because of the skill sets are, are, are different. Uh, and then the last one is, do you have enough memory to run cloud native principles? So this is containerization, virtualization, et cetera, enough resources on that, that um, uh, piece of hardware, or is it so constrained that you have to go embed it? Um, you know, usually it's around 256, 512 megs of memory on one node uh, before you have to kind of go embedded and start to drive software that's tailored to that uh, device. And all of it's funny because I mean, it's, you know, I, I hear people all the time, say, oh, it's tiny, it's relative, you know, but it's, it's tiny, like, you know, running on a server. Uh, what is tiny? Oh, it's like 64 gigabytes. Well, on the left side, it's 10 kilo kilobytes, you know, so it's, it's very different. Um, I hear people talk about real time all the time. And, uh, real time in a building is 15 seconds. Every report the temperature or the energy usage every 15, or sorry, 15 seconds, 15 minutes. And then out in the, uh, uh, you know, the airbag is obviously a, a fraction of a second. So, you know, we're seeing you know, a lot of confusion too around these, what I call loaded terms, but those three uh, inflection points that the paper goes through in detail um, really help dictate where you would place compute along the continuum. And clearly, you know, mainframes in a highly centralized fashion are purpose-built 
for you know, what they do really well, but we're seeing bleed from those cloud principles into the data center. And you guys as a community are definitely um, are uh, helping to push or promote that and further that thinking, you know, and blending in with the traditional practices that have been around for quite a while. And we're seeing the same thing happening on the constrained side, constrained devices, you know, kind of bleed at the, the very specialized edges. Uh, so there's three kind of core rules that, that um, I'd like to see is, is sort of how do you scale edge computing? So first and foremost, decouple all of your data and applications from underlying infrastructure. Uh, you know, we've seen you know, in mainframes over the years, like kind of this more tight, tighter coupling, of course, cloud native is driving this, this decoupling, uh, even in client server, when's the last time your ERP system managed your PCs? You don't typically do that. But, but the more that you can create this separation and make it to where workloads can move anywhere along that continuum, um, the better. Um, the other big thing with edge is you want to decouple your edge uh, infrastructure from any given backend, whether it's a cloud or whatnot, uh, through sort of uh, neutral breaking points uh, as close as possible to the data source, because now all permutations from edge to cloud work. Uh, this is a big component. These two are what we're working on within LF Edge in terms of creating these different abstraction layers and modular architectures. Uh, LF Edge, of course, also within Linux Foundation. And the last one is, you know, extend cloud native principles wherever possible. We're starting to see some of these principles bleed into the to the mainframe uh, domain. We're starting to see some of these principles certainly come down through that smart device edge and and maybe kind of starting to touch on that constrained device edge. But then there is a point where resources become a challenge, but you know, the more we can abstract, uh, you know, all of these things, the better. So, you know, key principles that um, you know, we're seeing more and more people uh, out there. You know, started with just all these IoT platforms and you know, kind of siloed stacks, and people are starting to realize the importance of breaking things apart. Uh, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but you know, there's a lot of different uh, standards uh, out there that and, and open source projects that are working on edge and IoT and. And uh, your key point of the community, especially you know, LF Edge, and we're working with a lot of these, is that how do we start to kind of bring these together? We're all better off if we uh, focus on you know, more common infrastructure, consistent, and then we build the value around the wheel. Uh, and clearly, you know, open source is the modern way to drive standards. So the golden question is, is, is the uh, edge going to eat the mainframe just as much as, you know, there's some clickbait out there, is the edge is going to eat the cloud? And the reality is no. Um, I think the you know, mainframes serve a, a, a very um, you know, specific purpose. There's a lot of uh, benefits. We're seeing that bleed happen again between the cloud and, and the mainframe and exploration is what the, what's the right balance. Just like we're seeing the bleed between that smart device edge and, and uh, constrained devices. Um, but I think the pendulums, personally, I don't think it's gonna swing back per se, because there's just so much data coming on networks. I mean, even if you could move everything centrally from a just a bandwidth standpoint, it costs money. Um, I, I think it's just as these trends further emerge um, and, and kind of branch out, we're just gonna see, uh, you know, kind of highly distributed processing with each tool set and, you know, paradigm kind of serving, serving their own uh, you know, purpose. And um, so the answer is no, uh, Edge is not going to eat the mainframe or the cloud or, or you know, any of these different technologies. I think it's a symbiotic relationship. And a lot of people are like, oh, I've done been doing Edge for you know, 30 years. You know, I've been running stuff on-prem, but a real Edge application, and some people use the term Edge native, an Edge application comprehends a relationship to centralized resources, but also must work autonomously and, and deal with all the constraints that are out in the field. So uh, it's a definitely an architectural uh, decision uh, and, and kind of approach. So long-term, what we think, you know, we're talking edge now, long-term where we think things are headed, and there's a new project called Project of Alvarium and a variety of other great efforts around trust and data. If you focus on trusted data and you focus on those abstractions, you know, we get into this world of ambient com uh, computing and interconnected ecosystems across that spectrum. So long story short, you know, edge computing, it's driven by these different blends across that, at that, um, Continuum, you know, the three key inflection points, highly recommend reading the paper if, if uh, you haven't already uh, within uh, LF Edge. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's all the way across that spectrum, uh, very similar paradigms, except at the fringes where you have to get unique, whether it's constrained devices or, or the mainframe, uh, you know, highly centralized. Um, 
but they're necessarily different tools. Uh, we do want to bleed. We do want to make things as consistent as possible. But there's also a point we just have to recognize that that there's different needs, and and um, we just kind of consciously uh, uh, make things uh, unique when we need to to satisfy all of the the constraints. So hopefully this was helpful if, if you're new to Edge, and and I really appreciate again having me and um, enjoy the rest of the conference. All right? Thanks. <laughs>